I am the first armless pilot in aviation history. I had a great fear of flying and I wanted to show the world that you shouldn't let fear stand the way of what's possible. I was really being authentic with myself. I wanted to pursue it to overcome the fear. And so it became this possibility to ride after college to show the world that you can and it really strengthened my faith. It was a journey because when you're emotionally terrified of doing something and still you do it, it takes a lot of faith. I'll tell you that. A lot of prayers, a lot of rosaries, <laughs> and a lot of praying right before takeoff. I mean, I conquered flying and became a pilot, but I still have a little fear in me. But it's also now a platform to show the world that you, if, if you have the courage and you have the faith, you can go great places. So sometimes we just have to really push ourselves to know that He's with us all in everything we do, even those things that are scary sometimes. Learning any new thing, whether that mean learning to use your feet in ways that people use their hands, or scuba dive, or surf. But out of the necessity of, I guess you could call it survival or whatever, as a kid, I had to learn to use my feet because they were the only option I had. So I had to learn very early on how to learn something new, how to be creative, how to persevere. And that skill set stays with you forever. If you're never challenged in a way, then you won't be able to stretch your skill set to be able to be resilient. And so that stayed with me from the early age of two or three years old when I'm trying to, you know, grab a hold of something with my toes and do it, or find a new way to get dressed because everyone else uses their hands to get their clothes on. Those type of skills that I was forced to do in order to survive became a mu like a muscle that was strengthened over time. And now, as an adult, I just take on things like flying a plane and uh, pursue it and not give up because that focus that has come and developed over the years, not only po focus, but the creativity, the resilience, the belief that you can do it, those type of things that if you, ne if you never struggle, if you never struggle with anything, how do you develop that muscle that we all have? I'm actually onto a huge project with a team of people, not just myself, but we are building the first ever airplane that can be flown with feet. And while it sounds incredible, this contribution to aviation that's never been done, it's also a big picture um, thing. We can create a world that's accessible for others. If someone wants to fly a plane and they may not have all their limbs, they can fly a plane. If we keep that out of the box thinking, going forward, universal design, engineering a world that's accessible for all, there won't be disability or um, people being held back or felt like they're not included. It will be something that we can all succeed at but we have to keep that open mind. And that's what this airplane is going to be. It's gonna open people's minds because first we're starting out with a simulator and that's the hope to expand their horizon, to open up what's you know possible in their mind about engineering, creativity, making things accessible. We shouldn't strive to fit in a box. We should strive to be ourselves, be the gift and the uniqueness that God has, you know, made us and allowed us to be different as we're always told you know every single one of us is unique there's no way to replace any of us because there's just that uniqueness that we have and so that's why i think it's about celebrating that and not only that i like to bring awareness to limb difference and people who've either lost limbs or are born without a limb which one in 1900 people are born without a limb so it's not as rare as it may sound even if you have a disability, even if you may not be perfect, no one's perfect, but if you don't you know, fit these criteria of not having Down syndrome and all that stuff, I think that life is still something worthy of everyone and no matter what the circumstances. And so for me, it's been a wonderful platform. Being that I was born with such a visual difference, I mean, for the longest time, I didn't even call it disability but I'm able to see it as a blessing. And now it's the reason that I've been all over the world because of the very reason that I didn't understand as a young person. Disability doesn't mean inability. 
and that they can do some incredible things if you only give um, a child the opportunity. I remember once having a rough day. Somehow that particular day it felt like everyone was staring at me because I wasn't having a good day. And I was walking up and down the um, aisles trying to find my aunt. And every time I walked through these aisles, I felt like everyone's head was turning and staring at me. And I was feeling more and more like everyone was staring at me. And I just got so frustrated and angry that I ran behind a rack of clothing and I just hid behind it. And I said, God, if you could just make me normal. It was that moment of just feeling like hitting rock bottom. And I kid you not, a week later, I was at, at that exact same store getting gas for my car. And I was fueling my car by myself with my feet, holding onto the gas pump, fueling my car. And this guy comes out of nowhere from behind at one of the other um, gas tanks. And he comes up to me and he's pointing back at his car. He said, you see my daughter in that car? You just watching you today has like really changed our lives. She, he had tears in his eyes. Apparently his daughter had lost some fingers in an accident or something and seeing that she could continue to live in her life and you know be fine and do things and he was so moved by that and I realized that that was God's answering my question can't you just make me normal and he said no I don't want you to be normal I want you to be able to have this kind of impact on people